What's up everybody, Gary here from G from BC. Today, we're not gonna be the one actually doing the unboxing or giving our first impression on the Blue Eddy portable power station. Today, my buddy Jack, who have you seen on my channel, uh, he's the guy with the awesome, awesome Overland built F-150. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out right here. But he's gonna be doing an unboxing and giving his first impression and a bit of testing uh, on this portable power station. Anyways, let's head on over there so he can unbox it and give his first impression. Yo! Yo, I got something for you. Oh, what's this, man? <laughs> Special delivery. Damn. All right, go pick it up. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jack. My IG handle is the dot enthusiast eighty four, and we are doing a unboxing video of the Bluetti Bluetti AC sixty P, which is the six hundred watt unit at the front. We have a photo of the unit itself. Its weight in both kilograms and pounds. Comes with a six year warranty and different plugs it comes with, uh, with or cords I should say. So I guess the US standard socket and also the EU standard socket. On the sides, so it looks like you can like combine these guys and I guess multiply the power comes with the bluetooth app i'm guessing to check the power status and uh, how fast it's charging it is ip65 protected so it's uh looks like here it's somewhat waterproof 3000 plus life cycles so it looks like you can use it recharge it uh over 3000 so what it can power looks like it gives you examples here i'm sure it's not limited to these but it's just giving examples so, cell phone, TV, car fridge, space heater, which is actually pretty cool. Laptop, lights, fans, and a projector. Okay, right off the gate, we got what looks to be the instruction manual. We got some packaging here on the side, which is actually good, because obviously there's a battery, you want to protect it during shipping. And then we got a box at the top here. So let's take out this box here and I'm guessing this is probably a power cord. Let's open it up. Yeah, it looks like it's the power cord. So you got um, your standard cigarette lighter, your three prong US cord. I believe this is your solar cord. I'm gonna take out the packaging on the top. Move this over here. Okay, we got the unit itself, which is wrapped in plastic. And then, got a handle, wow, this guy's heavy. Okay, I'll put this guy down. All right, so taking off this wrapper here, pulling up the handle. Okay, so my first impression is, this guy is heavy duty. It's heavy. It's textured plastic all around and it, it feels quite thick. The, the handle that flips up actually is a hard plastic, but underneath right over here, there's actually a rubber grip, which is good when it rains, especially in BC. It rains a lot over here. So we got your 12 volt, volt cigarette connection here. I like how there's covers on these too for when it rains, I like that. And we got a USB-C, 100 watt, which is plenty of power. It'll recharge your phone in no time with that. USB-C like standard 1A, and another USB-C-A. Okay, and we got a standard wall socket, three prong. We got two of those bad boys. We got some stuff on the side happening too. What is this? Are these more cigarette outlets? Oh, I think this is for your solar connection. I could be wrong. No, that's not it. I do not know what that's for. I'll have to read the instructions to figure that out. Can I answer this one for you? Sure. I just read it. 
it is the expansion pack. So you can actually, you remember the box? It said- Oh yeah, you, you they can, connect. They connect all three. So I guess the cord for the expansion pack must come with the expansion, expansion. Yeah. packs themselves. Otherwise there's no use. Yeah. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Which is pretty cool actually. Yeah. What, what I like too, I just, uh, uh, one, one thing I like is all the vents. It, yeah, it so gives, it doesn't overheat, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, up top, pretty cool wireless charging pad so we gotta see uh how well that works i know some of them are touch and go but this one actually looks pretty slick i like how you can tell where the actual pad is because around it is textured as opposed to you guessing where you should be putting your phone so that's uh that's a pretty uh nice nice design there definitely thought in that design okay around the back so it says here light so that must be a light Part's always so satisfying. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's see. Let's see how bright this light is. Yeah. Woo! That's pretty bright. Yeah. It's cool that it's power already. And then the blinker. Yeah. I actually have a light reader if you want to test out the lumens. Yeah. We could probably do that later. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do that later. Yeah. Okay, on the other side. Okay, so this looks like it is, is this the, this is the regular socket input. This looks like a fuse. So if your fuse pops, it looks like you're supposed to turn this with a Phillips uh, screwdriver. And I'm assuming that it pops out so you can change the fuse. And this is your AC input just to plug it in the wall. Okay, so we're gonna turn on the unit. Power button is right here with your standard on off button. And I like the button, it is, textured it's a rubber texture it's not hard plastic so you can distinguish it from the rest of the surface so you just push it hold it down and it's on it looks like it comes about 50% charged already and it's a nice high definition LED screen so I like how they retain that it looks like you have an AC DC so depending on which outlets you're using it looks like you can turn on DC, if you're using these guys here. AC, if you're using these two here. And it looks like they're, you can both use them simultaneously. So you can have uh, all these plugged in and it looks like it should just be fine. All right, so we got a light meter here. We're gonna check the foot candles that uh, this light from the unit emits. So right now, based on just the camera light we got 14 16 foot candles approximately three feet away and let's check out this one see how bright this guy is all right so our readings are hold on here i'm gonna angle it towards this thing we're looking at about 23 foot candles about i don't know eight inches give or take it's obviously going down as i angle a sensor away from the light but when I angle it towards the light it does go back up to 20 what well, was it 23 so it's 22 right now 24 I'd say average 23 average 23 foot candle right so we're kicking it up a notch and wow this goes up to 50 foot candles on average uh, it's changing but it was up to 50 which is like indoor commercial store bright so this is this is quite bright further away i'm about i don't know maybe almost three feet away we're at seven seven foot candles which still isn't bad so if you use this i don't know around your your camp table i think you should be fine so uh we're inside my house now we are gonna test out the bluetti ac 60p we're gonna hook it up to my coffee bean grinder as well as my espresso slash latte machine and see how well it does. So I'm gonna plug in the espresso machine first, the coffee grinder. All right. Oh wow, okay, it turned on. So that's good news. All right. That turned on too. So let's see, let's see if uh, this thing can power it. Nice, look at that. Freshly ground beans. So we're still at 49%, which is awesome. Okay, let's pop this bad boy in. 
positive guy, so I'm a cup half full attitude. Every day, all day. All right, double shot of espresso coming up. All right, so we just tried the espresso machine and it's saying here that we've overloaded it. Let's try unplugging the coffee bean grinder and see if that helps. We'll lighten up the load there. Okay, try it again. Overloaded. All right, so I guess we can't have lattes in the camp, unfortunately. We have to stick to drip coffee. It is what it is. All right, so we just checked this out online and the grinder power requirements is 165 watts. The latte machine is 1,560 watts. So quite a discrepancy there. About 10 times as much power that this guy needs uh, than the grinder. It has an internal heater, so which is probably why, and obviously the pump and whatnot, that did uh, draw so much power. And I think the, uh, I, just reading in the box, um, it was 600 watt, remember? 600 watt max output? Yeah. Okay, so this is basically like more than doubling it. Doubling it, yeah, exactly. That's why it's overloading, overloading it. yeah. Okay, now nope. we know. Now we know. All right, let's power this bad boy. We are gonna recharge this starting at 48% using a standard wall socket. You see input right here, gonna open up that flap, take the plug. Plug that sucker in. All right. See if it's charging. Yep. You can tell that it's charging because of this graphic here. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to wait, see how long it takes. Yeah, so we're just starting to charge it and we are gonna charge it for about an hour. Three, two, one. Hey, all right, let's press that button, bro. Yo, that's pretty cool. 95. Within just like a good hour with this big battery, Charge pretty much full already. It went from 48 to 95. Yeah. So that's almost 50% right there. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, 43%. Yeah. Cool. Let's see if it works. I'm doing it at the little magnet thing. So. Oh, unless, do we have to push something for this to turn it on? Maybe? Nope. We can try, we'll try it without the case. Yeah, without yeah, case. All right, so, we're gonna try it out with the without the case. There we there go. There go. So it is without the case. Without the case. Yeah, this this case is fidgety. Yeah. All mm. right. Wireless charging on the go. All right. Uh, next one, we're gonna test out the fridge, but that'll be tomorrow. So. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right. So it's the next day. Uh, we're out at Cultus Lake. We got the new air dual chamber fridge freezer. Uh, connected to the Blue Eddy. Charged it 200% last night, so it's 100% right now, and uh, we'll see how long it lasts. After eight hours of use, it went down to 14%, but this is due to the fact that the fridge was mainly used as a freezer, which probably caused the power to go down a lot quicker. All right, so just final thoughts on the Blue Eddy AC uh, 60P. Definitely more, more rugged than uh, other uh, power banks that I'm used to. Rubber stops uh, on the front and the thick plastic uh, definitely helps out. Um, the forest service road on the way in was fairly bumpy and this thing uh, definitely took it like a champ. As far as power goes, I had uh, my fridge, um, my utility lights and my LED lights around my 270 awning hooked up to it and it lasted about a day and a half which actually isn't bad considering all the power it was drawing and my fridge was basically on full blast i had the big side it's a dual chamber fridge as a freezer and the small side as a fridge and again yeah day and a half so uh, pretty impressed uh, with this unit anyways that'll do it for this video again thank you so much blue eddy for sending over the ac 60p power station for us to test out if you guys are interested in any of the blue eddy products they are going to be going on sale during prime days which is july 16th to the 17th if you guys want to get an extra 50 dollars off uh, use the code gee pd 50 and you get an extra $50 off on the Canadian uh, website. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Also, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Until next time, guys, like always, stay awesome.
All right, thanks, lighting guy. Good job. Say hi to your girlfriend. Hi. <laughs>